Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Huffman of somethingaboutmaps.com and today I'm just going to give you a quick walkthrough of how to make a simple striped pattern in Adobe Illustrator. This is something that I get questions on from time to time and it's not too hard to make your own. So we'll walk through that. So in the middle here I've just got a simple striped polygon and one thing you notice is if I select the fill color over here and look in the swatches menu it turns out my uh, fill is a pattern swatch. Swatches menu can contain not just solid colors, you know, like purple or green or what have you, but if I undo that, it can also contain patterns. And in fact, there's a lot of pre-made patterns that already exist in Illustrator that I can easily drop in. If I go down to the bottom left of the Swatches panel, there's a library menu. And besides various, you know, different um, color swatches that I could pull up, I could also instead go to patterns, and there's a lot of different options here. So I could say, find me some basic lines and pick something like this instead. What I find, though, frequently is that uh, it takes longer to browse through this menu and find exactly the width or spacing that I'm looking for than it does just make my own. So I'm going to step back to this thing instead and go back to what I had. So I want to show you how to make this. And what I'm going to do first is I'm actually just going to delete this pattern swatch and fill this back in with purple just so I can start over from scratch and show you how it's put together. First thing I'm going to do is going to make a new layer. And in this new layer, I'm just going to zoom into a small section of the map here for a moment. And I'm just going to draw a line. And when I've got that line selected, I'm going to go to Window, Pattern Options. And this brings up the Pattern Options panel. And in here, I can create a new pattern by clicking that icon on the upper right and selecting Make Pattern from the menu. And this takes me to a new view uh, away from my map and away from my artwork and shows me what this line would look like if it were a pattern. That is, if it were repeating up and down and left and right. And I can actually change the spacing of how frequently it repeats if I want to. I could say, let's repeat every four points. Uh, let's change the height to 30. You can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. But what I want to do instead is I want to click Size Tile to Art. Uh, and what that does is make sure that the height, the, rep the repetition vertically is exactly the same as the line width, uh, uh, the line height rather. And it sets the width in this case to 2, even though I have a 1 point stroke. I think there's some sort of default there just to make sure that these things don't crowd in on each other. But if I turn that back off, these numbers stay filled in and I can always change this. And I'm going to bump this up to 3, just to make a little bit wider space pattern than I had before. With that, uh, I'm pretty well done. I'm going to call this Line Pattern. And I go up here and I click Done. And what you can see is in my swatch menu, I've got a new pattern. My original line also is still hanging around. I can just click that and delete it. And I'm just going to hit Command-0 here and go back out to the full view. And I'm going to select my little, uh, my little mysterious polygon here. And if I go over to the Swatches menu and I click on this, it's filled in with a pattern. It's that simple. Now, these lines look a little bit small to me, uh, and before, if you remember, I had them turned at a 45 degree angle, and those are really simple to change without really having to redraw my pattern from scratch. So let's deal with the rotation first. If I hit R, I go over to the Rotation tool, and you know, ordinarily you've got something selected, you use the Rotation tool, and it turns like this. But if you hold down the, the uh, tilde key while you click and drag, it rotates the pattern instead. It doesn't rotate the object. So I can kind of get a nice 45 degree angle there. I could also be more precise about this. I could either while holding on the uh, R tool hitting enter or by going to object transform rotate, both of them get you the exact same menu, just want to show you two different ways through there, I can type in an exact angle and make sure that only transform patterns is checked and not transform objects. Turn on preview there, and it's transforming the pattern. Whereas if I turn on transform objects, it's also rotating the object. So let's just keep only transform patterns on. So I can rotate that to however I want. I can also make it bigger. Same idea applied in this case to the scale tool. I can hit S, go over, hit enter, rescale things. This menu also comes up if I go object transform scale. And I can say, let's scale this 300%, but only transform patterns. That's the only thing it's checked. And 
this case, that didn't work. Is it because I didn't have it selected? Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. Tedded. Sometimes you got to do things second time. But in this case, right now I've scaled up the pattern 300%. So my original pattern, if I just draw another polygon in here, um, clear that and reapply the swatch, uh, you can see there is just uh, these simple vertical stripes that are thin, but I can make them bigger and I can rotate them without having to move my object around. It's all still part of the same swatch. If I want to change my spacing though, I've got to go back in and I've got to edit my swatch. Uh, I can do that by double clicking on the pattern here in the swatches panel and go back to how it was made. I could say, let's change that back. Let's tighten that up to two point spacing and go done. Now everything that's tied to it has changed including the, you know, even these, these have been enlarged and rotated, but they're now still tighter together. One thing you might notice uh, right around here, it looks like there's almost a little gap in the pattern, uh, right around sort of um, Colorado and Oklahoma. And if I zoom in, it's gone. And this is simply because you probably encountered this in Illustrator before. Sometimes when two objects exactly abut each other, there's a little infinitesimal gap that gets drawn. That's not gonna print but it might still bother you to see. So if I zoom back out to where we can see it, oh, there's a pretty good one, right? And see right, that, right up there. Uh, one way I can do that, uh, I can solve that, is if I go back to my pattern and I zoom in here and I change my height to be a little less than the height of the line that I originally drew. Let's make it 20. So now the pattern repeats on itself and actually overlaps. So the, the next set of lines up here, for example, on top, actually slightly overlap the original line. And this one down here overlaps the next set of lines. And that makes sure there's none of these little tiny gaps. So I can go back and see that now this is gone. There's no problems here with that. If I want to change the color, there are a couple of ways to do it. Uh, if I don't like this purple, for example. Uh, first off, I can go back in and I can double click here once more and say, let's you know make this like this green, that could work. Uh, but one way I can also control the color is to tie this in to a global swatch. So if you notice here, I've actually, all of these are uh, existing color swatches that I already had in this document. Uh, if I pick the blue one, for example, right, and I've, I've now tied the color of these stripes to this blue swatch. So if I go back out here, and it's blue, but if I go back into my blue swatch and double click this thing, and I made sure it says global here, uh, when I, uh, that that box is checked, as I change the color of this swatch and I turn on preview, the pattern that is tied to it also changes. Uh, I find that just a little bit more convenient method sometimes for modifying these things. So there you go. A real quick walkthrough of how to create pattern swatches in Illustrator, and you can obviously take this a lot farther. You can make various, you know, kinds of cross hatches and dashes and dots, and you know, I'll kind of leave that for you to play around with. But just getting a simple striped hatcher pattern, all you've got to do is draw a straight line, make a pattern from it, and then just rotate and scale that thing, and you're all set. So thanks for joining me. If you'd like to see more tutorials, uh, more about my work. You can visit me at somethingaboutmaps.com and check out the tutorials I've got linked there or follow me on Twitter or throw some support my way via Patreon or just read my general cartographic thoughts on my blog. Thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.